the question I can't answer is how much money will we get and when will we get it? We um, don't know the answer to that. Um, hopefully we're at the end of our submittal um, with your letter of support. Um, if we can get that, um, we'd like to submit our final proposal and obviously see what happens. Hopefully we get something. Um, and anything is better than nothing, mm -hmm. so it is worth the effort. And, and I think it's a win-win for all the communities. And it also um, is a, a really good link with the joint land use study that yes. we're doing as well. Yeah. Questions? No, um, I was just thinking, you know, if, if you guys had uh, some language that you would like in a support letter, I'd be happy to draft one. Um, we're having a working meeting on Wednesday if we voted on it today, or at least voted to uh, agree to it if it's acceptable to the commission on Wednesday. We could have that to you very quickly. That'd be terrific. We, we could do a, a draft and send it to you, and you could use some of the language or not, or okay. whatever you chose. We could have that to you today. Okay. Frank, any comments? Well, yeah, I think I need to get a step ahead. Uh, there's a big area here, talking about this blue here. Mm -hmm. I think there should be some public meetings with the landowners. I mean, there's a, if you look at that there, you can make it clear down almost the Raysburg Road, completely takes in all the round ready for all the Williams there, all that. I mean, there's a, uh, I don't think it's up to us to make that decision. I think uh, the people are pushing that, you better have some public meetings with the, so these people are involved. Absolutely. We would we would be working with the property owners to see if they were even interested. If they're not interested, that's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. More than likely, we aren't going to have the monies to get to Limestone Hills. Um, we're, we're hoping that we at least we can get to our um, first priority area, which is to the east of Fort Harrison. We're not likely to see um, monies for easements at Limestone Hills, but we're required to have four priority areas. Deborah, would you also back up uh, for Franklin and kind of describe what it is you're trying to do? You're not trying to take over this land. Oh, no. no. What, would you just kind of go back to uh, what the, the overall purpose is, just so that we're all clear and on the same page? Sure. It's about for a willing landowner um, to put a conservation easement on their property to hopefully mitigate some of what may be encroachment issues. Let's say they sell off their land and want an, a very large development and they can bring in sewer and water and highways. Um, when you are, um, let's say a rancher who's interested could get a lot of money if he limited his development on his property to maybe, um, in some cases there have been um, uh, just one ranch um, house and maybe another ranch house and another for a family, but it's limiting the development on the land if they so choose. Does that? Essentially well, what you're saying I is you're going to put... Are, but. And I may, know, may I clarify yes. for a minute? Essentially what you're saying is you are looking to propose an idea to put together some funds specific to the blue area as a fourth choice to the other three areas, so that if there is a landowner interested, you have the means to work with them. Correct. Right. If yeah. it's yeah, exactly. So that within having this plan, it's a very much a planning level document. This is, and, and so if the areas are within these four color schemes, it would then be the, the guard would then be able to, to go to the next step and, and then look at developing a very site-specific project with a willing landowner within one of these colored areas. But this doesn't mean it would be um, anything other than for planning purposes, allowing it to maybe move forward or be eligible for funding moving forward. Basically, what this proposal will allow us to do, should we get funding, is we can go ask the question of a property owner, are you interested in uh, a conservation easement? Right now, we can't go to a landowner because we have no money, one, and we don't have a, a partnership where we've identified a piece of land that will benefit all the parties involved or all the conservation groups and conservation fund, all the people involved. So this is the part just to get to the money 
And once we get the money, um, we'll, we'll be able to know what we can work with. And, and the thing is, is if there is somebody interested and we don't even get to the planning piece, there's nothing we can do to help that landowner. Exactly. Correct. If a landowner is not interested, regardless if you give the money or not, that's their choice. It's their land. Yep. You're yep. not going to in any way. No. Nope. Okay. If they're not interested, then that's just fine. We'll work in other priority areas. But if we don't submit this proposal requesting this funding, funding, um, we will receive nothing at all, obviously. And it, it is not held by the federal government, by the Montana Guard. It's, these easements will be held by those conservation groups and or whoever they're partnering with. So this won't end up in our hands at all. We will have no control over it. Does that clear some stuff up? No, not really. Uh, I have a problem with <clears throat> under there around Fort Harrison, Wilson Park County, but uh, I still have reservations for this part in Broadwater County. Is there something we could, well, is there another question that you? Madam Chair, Amber Arthur, may I make a comment? Yes. Franklin, at this point of the game, the chances of them getting any money for the limestone area is very slim, but they have to submit it under the requirements of this uh, grant proposal. They have to have four different proposals. Yeah. Their high priorities are around Fort Harrison. Until there's any money involved, there's no sense talking to a landowner because there's no deal that can be made. It's, it's, it's a proposal at this point. I realize that. I guess it was still, I, I, I just, if they want to do that around the Fort Harris area, I mean, that they should be able to just take that area and, and get it done. Uh, I think the problem is they have to have four. Well, that's why I understand, and that's why it's uh, just a bunch of bureaucracy, I would say, that gets involved there. It is bureaucracy, I can't, can't say that it isn't, that's for sure. Um, you know, and there, originally when we were looking at planning years ago, they used to draw it so there was just this mild donut around the installations. And then they started to want to uh, refine that a little bit more, so then they started wanting to have it be along property boundaries. And I think the donut <coughs> idea was so that there isn't the concern that you're targeting in or, or honing in on certain landowners. but. The, the downside to that is it didn't provide you with a true understanding of what kind of parcels <coughs> you might are around your area and what might be reasonable for um, you know what types of private lands might be um, surrounding these areas that you might want to talk to the private land owners around. So the, the reasoning that it has that shape is originally it did have that sort of mild donut and this was refined to, to be more along property lines which is something the guidance along over the, the last couple of years has um, updated. So. And Lewis and Clark County did that open space bond a few years ago, so they have $8 million or something in the um, open space bond left, I believe. So we've also asked them for a letter of support, which they've granted us. But the idea is getting all these entities together, coming up with a, 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 a a bit of money and seeing what we can do with it as a community. What what will serve the best purpose for everybody involved? And our part is, okay, we'll apply for these fund, this funding, and if it can um, benefit us, hopefully, and benefit the rest of the community, we're, we're all sort of winners in the, in the game, um, rather than not applying for this funding. So it, it, I don't know that it could be, I don't know how it could be negative to tell you the truth, or not a good thing for everybody. Did you address the city council, Townsend City Council, and have yes. they agreed to a support letter for They've this? already given it to us, yes. Did they have any contrary comments? No. Nope. No, nope. they had lots of questions, but they were seemed to be fine with it. I think they saw it as a win-win for everybody. It's kind of like, getting money together to 
maybe help some of our land areas to remain the way they are without major developments going in. And certainly the local conservation organizations, you know, money is always an issue, and, and to have a potential source of federal funding available without really strings attached yes. to it yeah. is um, pretty unique. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's a good opportunity for them as well. So how long before you would hear if you have got any money? <laughs> the reason I look at it, I've been working on this thing for a couple of years, and that's the one thing that one of the reasons we haven't gone out into the community to the property owners and said oh would you be interested in this is because we've been working on it for about four years now and we haven't seen any money yet and we're at our fault but they also keep changing the uh, rules on the game kind of thing and this will be our final submittal and hopefully we'll hear within the next um, year or so what the funding is and that sort of thing how much we'll be getting What's the chance that they would fund all four? Probably, I would say zero, because we're not the we're not in the greatest need. We're, so we're competing with. There's at least thirty-eight or forty other um, egg hubs around the country, but they have um, their issues are worse. Minnesota, um, other places where there's encroachment that that really is a an imperative issue. Um, so they they are of course are being looked at, and also. Um, some of them have uh, threatened and endangered species, which elevates their proposals as well, and we, we do not have that. So um, the, the likelihood of getting all four is not great. To tell you the truth, we'd be happy if we just got one, because the encroachment on our eastern um, boundary is, is going to cause some issues for us. And, well, and I was just even though these you know extensive areas here are colored, there's no um, no notion that that would seek easements on on all of these or or that would truly be able to you know limit development on all these. But it by having it colored, it allows to work with the willing landowners. Whereas Deborah mentioned, there are a couple of potential willing landowners right from yep. the Potomac area that it would then allow these funds to be to then bring a project together and then seek funding for that specific project yeah. under the ACUP program. Because what happens is on this yellow area, our, our flight pattern is um, coming in from the north and leaving from the east, and it's uh, Chinooks and uh, Black Hawks, and as they get noisy, and people say, you know, that's a little noisy for me, because war happens at night, so they're also training at night, and as that noise affects them, and it starts to say, well, we'd rather you didn't train from 8 p.m. to 8 in the morning. And that starts to shut down. We're one of the few um, training centers in the West. If it starts to shut down our ability to train, we literally have to go someplace else. And they may move us to the closest other places in Idaho. So we have a great impact on the economy economically. So we're trying to make sure that we remain a viable training center. And the only way we can do that is by making sure that we have somewhat of a buffer between us and development that, that doesn't work for us. And it doesn't mean no development. It just means some development isn't as workable as others. <coughs> Light industrial uses, commercial uses, that sort of thing. That, that works well with us. Um, ranching, grazing, that works well with us. But you know, other types of development just isn't going to work for us. So it's not about stopping development. It's about trying to make sure that it's more compatible with with uh, what we do on our land, the uses we have on our land. More questions, Franklin? No. I guess they want to go ahead. See if they get some further study, you can go ahead. I know there'd have to be a a lot right before they were coming for a hundred certain for this county. You see yourself what it is there. In fact, it might even almost go towards your place. No, it just doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Yeah, yeah. So. Is that a motion then? Uh, I'm not going to make a motion for it. I'll go ahead and I'll agree, but I'm not going to make the motion. I would be happy to make a motion. I move that we um, work with you guys to construct a support letter and uh, work uh, have that for Wednesday's meeting to sign. Um, 
in support of the overall income plan. Is that a second? Yeah, I'll second. It's moved and seconded then that we do a letter of support for this um, Department of Military Affairs for this project that they're working on, the ACUB priority. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Motion carried. All in favor. All against, please. I'm sorry. Thank you, Ms. No vote. Are you abstaining? Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. I've got a question before I leave. Okay. Yeah. Before you head down, I'll be sure to I want to write it. Sorry, Laura. Because I happen to be a, you know, we'll call it joint landowner. Mm -hmm. We're right behind Continental Line. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess if we could get some information as, as a potential system that's affected. Sure. Um, and is this part of the, and you were saying this is part of the joint land use study, in some respects, how would that be? It's complementary to the joint land use study. So the joint land use study is separate, but this would allow if some areas were identified where some property owners wanted. Obviously, the idea is a buffer zone um, between um, development and, or conflicting development, not development, but conflicting development and, and the installation on the installation. So this would allow funding to perhaps purchase some of those areas where there's conflict and where the property owner is Because the, uh, I guess, is the line plants operation considered as a conflicting? No, 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 no. It doesn't have anything to do with the, the that would remain how it is. And nothing would change about that. It's, it's about the areas outside of those boundaries of limestone, or the mine is within the limestone hills boundaries, so it's more about the outlying um, property, not within the limestone hills. So, so your main interest is south and east of? Yeah. That's why I'd like to have, if I could, I'd get a copy of the cover oh, map. Sure. Do you have an extra one? Yeah, I. Because we're on any we're on Indian Kirk. I don't know if you're doing it. Um, okay. Because we also have, since you are part of, are you part of, actually part of the National Guard? Yes. So we had, we talked to Sandy West. Sandy West, Sandy. Yeah. Yep. And we found some survey markers mm -hmm. that the Guard evidently has put up. And we would like to know what they mean, where they go, you know, where are the angles, where's the dangles. Uh, and sure. we have not received any information. Do you have um, some your contact information? Can I ask you guys to take that outside? Yes. Okay. Please. Thank you. Bernie. I don't have a COS today, um, but in the course here too. Um, Conrad, Chris Conrad and Nita um, are a preliminary approval on the subdivision over by Mosted Lane and Carroll Drive. And um, they wanted to visit with you on the road issue there. If that's okay, or after my I'm done, so public hearing or public comment. <laughs> yeah, I would do so. Would, Bernie, would that be better off to be put on the agenda so the public, if they wanted to come in? Um, they, um, I had talked to them and told them that it would have to be put on the agenda. Okay. But they had some information they wanted to give to you to just look at um, and then put it on the agenda. But so you'd have some information to look at over the week or whatever. That would be fine. So they could make yes. that. This is the cost of all the. Um, oh, excuse me. Okay, thank you. The cost of the excavation for the road. We did pass on the road 
and we're just requesting we get credit. It costed the 227 feet to um, Carroll Drive is in here, and the total cost of the bid for the road, along with pictures and our payment. Um, the picture, the first picture is from the gravel lane where we started on Carroll Drive. The segment shows the turn to Loki Lane and then our required call the south. And we're just asking if we can use that 4502 that we already put in on Carroll Drive as our 350s for our final approval. guys like this to say road discussion or wanted to say something more specific? Well, for our final we have to have that 350th set into I don't know, a pot that for road construction so I don't know. Try to upgrade of Carol. How about subdivision road destruction? Destruction. Construction. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Careful <laughs> there. Yeah. The road has passed. We don't have the information from the state, but they did pass that road, so we're just waiting for a final plan. Okay. Does that sound okay to you, Madam Chair? It does. All right. Nicole, have you got this? Just now. So I, I'm glad that. Uh, now I want to talk about that. that has, just pertains to their what we approved there once before you know, that extension was in that cul-de-sac in there, right? Um, you know, I guess just glancing over it, it, it looks like this is for Carroll Drive. Right. Yeah. Not the other portion of the. Other but I guess that's putting her on the spot too. She's gonna be able to look it over. Is that, is that correct? It's just Carroll Drive? Yeah. yeah. I guess the, the money they spent on that would go onto their approval of the subdivision. I'm not sure I'd have to change it. I'd have to see. Yeah, I guess we'd place it. Let's see what one of one of the conditions of their approval was that they would have to contribute three fiftieths of the cost to improve Carroll Drive to a county subdivision road standard. And so it appears that this is what they're requesting is that the work that they've done on Carroll Drive so far, instead okay, so of putting that money into a fund, they've actually done some road work maybe. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. That makes sense. Yeah. 
because that's remember the time we proved that the oh that turned around had to be so many feet and was we ext extended over that time and stuff like that. So okay. that's what all this pertains to, just okay. Carol driving that uh, cul de sac in there. Bernie, you don't have any COSs? No, I don't. Hmm. With that, uh, we're going to take a recess until 1.30.